Hi, uh, this is Kyle Marshall, aka Against Time. Uh, today I'll be doing a short video for you from the Merge Network. Uh, this is an $11 non-turbo Eagle room. Uh, I don't play very many of these. Uh, in fact, I only even recognize one of my opponents. I've uh, been trying to play a little more uh, in this 5 to $20 range lately. I know a lot of you play in that range, and that's where most of your opponents are, most of your experiences. So I'm trying to uh, get some of those in as well. Um, as usual, I'm going to skip through most of the hands early on here that I don't become involved with. Um, here I have fours, uh, th three over cards, not going to get involved here, pretty much ever. Just going to check, hope for a free showdown, and fold. Um, no reason to spend chips unnecessarily here. Uh, pretty standard raise with the ace-eight suited. Uh, probably okay to raise any suited ace here from the cutoff, but definitely anything in like ace-five suited or better, you should always be raising in the cutoff uh, in this blind level and uh, from earlier positions and later blind levels. Uh, we get a call here. Uh, I bet about two thirds pot. Definitely want to fire here. Um, it's coordinated enough. There are some draws they want to get rid of. Um, do get a call. Don't particularly like it. The turn, however, is a really good card for us. Um, and we're going to go ahead and fire again here. Uh, we picked up the flush draw and we still want to defend our hand. If we don't fire here, then our opponent's likely to bet on the river and we'll be faced with a, a more difficult decision. And by betting the turn here, we protect ourselves on the river if it's less favorable. Um, I make it about a little more than half pot. Um, I probably should have bet a little more than I did here, but this is okay. This is a little on the small end, but I would say uh, 100, 110, a little more though. Um, and we get a call here, and the river is about the best card in the world. Our, our opponent could have been on a flush draw, but we do have to bet here for value. And if we get raised, we'll likely just be folding. Um, I make it about 200. Um, still getting action from a lot of aces here. Still worth betting. Not a lot of hands here. Um, here with the queen eight suited, um, this is an optional hand. Uh, you can limp here. Uh, it's perfectly okay, especially if you're over the initial stack size and you have a little bit to work with. Um, it's okay to fold as well. It's pretty borderline. You could go either way with it. Obviously, wish I would have gone with it. Uh, here with the twos, um, I actually make this 3x. It just shows it being 70. Um, a lot of times if your opponent in the big blind in the early levels is um, loose and passive, you'll just want to limp these small pairs because they'll often be defending and these hands are hard to play post-flop and you'll be out of position. And you're really just playing them for set value in that case. But if you have an opponent who's um, tight or less likely to defend, I would always recommend raising the small pairs, um, especially this deep. And we just get a fold. Uh, here, raise the ace nine. This is about the loosest offsuit ace I would raise here from the cutoff in this level. Uh, don't recommend going much looser than this. There's not a lot of value in it early on. Um, this is pretty loose, uh, and I have been raising a lot, but I do go ahead and go for it. Um, you have good implied odds with hands like this. Uh, and this is a pretty good flop for me to bet with what I'm holding. Um, generally, though, um, when I get a flop like this and I don't connect, I would ch be more likely to check, especially as active as I've been. But since we did connect with this, we'll go ahead and fire. And I make it 120. I wanted to find my hand early here, um, since I did get a piece of it, but my hand is vulnerable. And we get a fold. That's really what I was hoping for. Um, here I'll just defend with fours. Um, our opponent checks, shows a lot of weakness here. A lot of times I'll go ahead and fire right away when I see that, but if he doesn't fire on the turn, then I really have to take a shot, and I recommend you do the same. If someone's checking to you twice, they're basically just asking for you to take the pot, and you should take a shot here. Um, and it's pretty economical too. I only have to win one time in three if I bet around half the pot, um, and we do take it down. Get a small pair again, raise from the button. Um, Jack-10 offsuit here, definitely should raise from the button. Um, cutoff would be okay, pretty loose in this level, but definitely should be raising from the button. 
Our opponent leads out here. We've been very active. I expect uh, a lot to get a lot of leading out, a lot of action here from people who aren't really holding anything as active as we've been. People like to start playing back at you. Um, sometimes when people bet out in situations like this, um, I'll raise just because um, I feel like they're bluffing or they're just trying to push me off my hand, and that's what I do here. Uh, you want to make it relatively large. I generally make it more than 3x in this situation because I wanted to find my hand right here, and I feel like... Um, if I don't win the hand on this street, I won't be continuing pretty much no matter what. Um, so I, I go ahead and raise here and I make it 200. And if my opponent comes along, I pretty much won't be doing uh, anything else unless I hit on the turn. I just limp here with the king nine. Again, I like to do that a fair amount with marginal hands early on if I think my opponent um, won't raise me off of it every time. And I go ahead and lead out here. It's very well disguised. I actually like to lead out super strong on boards like this. Um, it, if I check it, I, I'm unlikely to get action later if I won't get it now. A lot of times people float me now. Um, and, and you actually get more chips this way because they don't believe you would bet out with the 9. Uh, but we, our opponent didn't catch and um, we don't get any action. And like I said, a lot of times uh, it's not necessary that your opponent hits that flop. In fact, I uh, I didn't expect that he did. Um, I just felt that I would be floated by a lot of hands, uh, a lot of overcard hands, a lot of hands that really didn't hit at all just because they wouldn't believe me and they have position. Uh, here, obviously, raising the fives from the button. People are definitely more aggressive in blind versus blind than any other um, position war in poker and... Uh, You'll really see a lot of people play back at you and float you and things like that um, if they feel like you're just trying to lean on them a lot. Um, this right here is probably a mistake. Um, King 9 from the cutoff is fine to raise uh, in this blind level. Um, I would say it's a little on the loose end, but uh, opponents behind us aren't incredibly loose. This would be a good spot to steal. Um, I missed this one here. Not a terrible mistake, but this is definitely one you can go for. Um, should be going for that probably about 60-70% of the time, especially if there are tight players in the blinds like that. Obviously raising ace-8 from the button. We get a call here, and this is a pretty good board to see bet one high card. Um, I'll see bet this flop almost 100% of the time. And we do get a call here. Um, I don't particularly like that. Uh, sometimes I'll go ahead and bet the turn again if I think I can take it down. Um, don't like the flush card though because my opponent could have well been on that draw. And so we, we don't fire there. And then he bets 100 on the river, which is odd. I may well have fired on this river to try to steal it if he hadn't bet. But I, I'm not doing anything now that I have a bet in front of me. Um, there is a temptation to try to raise him off of this. Maybe that he doesn't want to pay more and he's trying to make the a small blocking bet. But uh, I think it's better to just fold here. A lot of times people will get too carried away with uh, extravagant bluffs and they'll stack off inappropriately. Easy raise with the queen jack. And here with the king jack, if the, my opponent in the big blind had shoved, uh, recognize that I would have called him. Uh, I know he's a little over 10 blinds. I would not expect to be ahead. Um, but when your opponent is around 10 blinds or left and you raise into them, you should be calling them because of the odds, especially with a hand like king jack that will almost always fare a 2 to 1 or better, which is what you need uh, to call there. Easy shove with the ace jack suited. Um, if you recognize your opponent's limping a lot, um, king eight suited is not bad to shove there. I almost would have certainly shoved king nine suited better. Uh, any pair, uh, any suited ace, probably ace five off suited better. I like to shove over um, these players who limp like this a lot with marginal hands and give it up when you shove. Um, especially when I'm at like the 10 to 14 blind stack size. So I am at a good stack size here too and my hand is just a little too marginal. Um, Still in the range, though. It wouldn't have been bad to go for it. Um, and sometimes I will. Would have called had my opponent shoved there. Uh, 
Uh, here with a queen eight, um, this is good enough to shove. The reason why I don't is because the big blind is shorter than me. Uh, sometimes you'll shove a little lighter in those situations than you otherwise would, but not a lot lighter. Um, queen nine, I would have been shoving there just to show you how close it was. I'm here for eight blinds. You can shove the ten six offsuit. I would have shoved ten seven every time. Uh, this is a this is one of those spots where you can uh, go for it or not. It's uh, pretty much by choice. It's very more borderline, very much equal EV. Um, I do choose to let the blinds hit me this time. Um, pretty fifty fifty for me though on what I'll do in that situation. A lot of times when I'm eight blinds under the gun and the six maxes on the bubble like that, I, I a lot of times I'll shove any two or close to any two. Uh, definitely shoving here with a jack high from the small blind, pretty standard. Uh, standard call with the ace three. Looks like we'll suck out on that one. Um, here I just open shove because we're on the bubble and the big blind is uh, a little short. Um, maybe a little extreme to open shove this one. Uh, the reason why though is because of the hand just after he lost and just in case he's on tilt. I like to avoid people playing back at me on the bubble when there's someone shorter than me. Um, had the previous hand not gone how it did I would have just made a small raise here and I would have even called if uh, my opponent moved in on me. And this is a spot I'll generally re-steal if there's not, like I said, a short stack here. Um, and I will still re-steal on a lot of regs because they'll just be raising relentlessly because they know how much uh, tighter you need to be in these spots. Um, but against an unknown, I am less likely to go for it in this spot with the short stack present. Um, I'm going to ISO here with the fives. Uh, I feel I'm quite a bit ahead of his range, and it's definitely the appropriate stack size to ISO shove it. And it looks like our hand will hold down to heads up. Uh, here I just make it 550 with the 45 suited. You can shove this all the way up to 20 blinds with the Nash chart. I don't generally um, like to start the deep shoving though early on. I like to try to make small raises and gain more of an edge and then if I feel that my opponent is playing me pretty tough then I switch to the Nash chart. Um, I actually make it 450. It just shows 550 and 450 will be my standard raise throughout heads up. I do get a flat call here and I follow up and I get calls again. Um, this is kind of awkward. Um, I, I guess you could make an argument for betting again here. Um, I choose to check. Um, it's possible my opponent is floating me with nothing or bluffing here, but I, I think I have a greater edge in just letting this go and uh, starting off shoving again. Not a lot of hands here. And our opponent is still limping in quite often, so we'll be shoving on those limps pretty loose. Uh, easy shove with the queen jack, easy call with the king ten suited, and it looks like his hand will hold in this one. Alright, so I hope you enjoyed that, and I'll be coming out with more videos shortly. And again, if you're interested in coaching, uh, please contact me at againsttime at gmail.com. I do offer reduced rates for um, buying multiple sessions or buying sessions of multiple hours at once. Alright, well, take care and uh, see you soon.